In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at a couple of properties of algebra from Chapter 2, Section 1, as well as a review of area. This comes right after Section 1, but it's something that we did last year and is necessary for the following lesson. So two of the major properties of algebra are the associative property. I'm going to shorten property to prop and the commutative property. And I'd like to point out that these work for multiplication and addition. They do not work for division and subtraction just because order matters with those two. So I'm going to start with the commutative property. So if you are familiar with the word commute, it's to go from one place to another. So think about the way that you take from home to school. Whether you're going from home to school or school to home, it is going to be the same distance between them. So this works for addition. So whether, whether I do 3 plus 2, it should be 5, no matter I do 3 plus 2 or 2 plus 3. This works for multiplication as well, where I have 4 times 5 is 20, which is the same as 5 times 4. Just note that all I'm doing is flipping the order in which I'm doing this operation it's in both sets. Now, the associative property, actually, we're going to go back a second. If I wanted to describe this with variables, I would say x plus y equals y plus x, or for multiplication, uh, x times y equals y times x. Now the associative property needs three pieces, and it just means that no matter how I group my operation, it will still give me the same result. So I'm going to use some even numbers here for addition. 2 plus 4 in parentheses plus 6. If I'm following order of operations, I have to add what is inside parentheses first. So the 2 and the 4, that's 6, plus 6 is 12. Hopefully, if I change up where the parentheses are, shift them one down, 2 plus parentheses, 4 plus 6. 4 plus 6 is 10, plus 2 is 12. So the associative property changes the order in which I do these things. If I were to change this for multiplication, I would, I'm going to do 1, 2, and 3. 1 times 2, parentheses, times 3 is 6. And the same goes for 1 times 2, whoops, 2 times 3. So first I'm doing 1 times 2, and then times 3. Next I'm doing 2 times 3, and then times 1. Even though times 1 doesn't really change anything, it is still part of our operations. Now, as a quick refresher, uh, area of rectangles. It doesn't really matter what side you call length and what side you call width. I'm always going to do length along one of them and width. I also use a fancy L. Uh, the area is going to be length times width. Don't get confused when there are extra numbers. Um, and just to add this in here, perimeter is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. A lot of people will just add length and width together and forget about the remaining two sides. This is where the 2L and 2W come from. But we're going to focus on this here. So what if I said the length was 4 and the width was 12? And I'm going to give them units of, let's go with millimeters. Well, from what we learned in the last chapter, we can plug these in or substitute in 4 for L and 12 for W. So my new formula would look like A equals 4 times 12. And 4 times 12 is one of our math facts. That is 48. But to be 100% proper, I need to include my units, millimeters, and squared. So this is 48 millimeters squared. Now for triangles, 
It's similar to um, rectangles, but we have different, um, what do you call it, dimensions that we are looking for. So we are looking for the B, which stands for base, and the height. So H is height. And you can find what the base and height are of a right triangle because those are the two sides that make the right angle. So I'm going to add this, the base and height form a right angle. And we can only find area of uh, right triangles. Right angle looks like this little box. So if I said, oh, sorry, the area of this, it should look familiar that this kind of looks, I'm going to change the color of this real quick to, let's go with light blue. This looks like it's a rectangle if I were to complete this shape. Well, this is half of this, and this is half of this, so it should make sense that if I had a height and a full base, that the area of a triangle would be half of that. So the area is one half times the base times the height. And let's say that the base is uh, six and the height is, let's go orange for this one. The height is um, nine. So I'm going to substitute those in and I get one half times the base of six and the height of nine. So I'm just working left to right. One half times six is the same as six divided by two. So area. So half of six is three times nine. Still keeping A here. Three times nine is 27. And since I don't have a units, usually I'm gonna write units squared just to cover my bases. Now you can try one and two on your own. Three and four, I give you one of the dimensions, whether it's a length or width, and I ask you to find the missing one. So I suggest pausing this now and trying one and two. If you get confused, look back earlier in the video. All right, so I'm gonna label my length is seven, my width is 12. And so area equals length of seven times width of 12. And I have units, but I'm not gonna write them in the uh, equation. So area equals seven times 12. I'm gonna usually break this up into seven times 10 plus seven times two, easier. If you don't know seven times 12 off your head, off the top, break it into two easier numbers. 70 plus 14. So this is 84 centimeters squared. And I have 10 inches and five. It does not matter which one you label your base or your height. So base, most people will say is five and height is 10. So my area is one half my base, which is five times my height, which is 10. Now I chose this for a reason because a lot of people are going to try and focus on this. The one half times five. What I know from earlier in this lesson is that, I'm gonna go back to it, is that multiplication is commutative. It does not matter the order, it's also associative, or how I group it. So I could flip this equation around if I wanted to. So in fact, I'm going to flip this. I want to look at, I think it's much easier to take half of 10 than it is of five. So A equals one half times 10 times five. So half of 10, well, that's a lot easier, is five times five equals A, and the area is 25, and my unit is inches, inches squared. Um, if it helps, you can also multiply the base and height first and then divide by two, but that doesn't always help us in the end.
so some people write the equation as base times height over 2. I prefer the 1 half. Now, looking down at 3 and 4, I have length equals question mark, width equals 6, and area equals 18. And I'm sure some of you are saying, well, we don't have enough information. Well, uh, right now, we can probably figure out what length is, but I'm going to show the algebraic way. So if A equals L times W, I'm going to replace what I know. I know that A is 18, so 18 replaces A. I don't know what L is, so I'm going to leave it. And I know that W is 6. So in my head, I'm saying what times 6 is 18. Oops. And I can do that in my head. That is 3. So L equals 3. And what are my units? Meters. The other way you can do this is, well, something times 6 is 18. So 18 divided by 6 should give me what my L is. And the last one, number 4. Again, I know what A is. I don't know what B is. But I know what my height is, is 16. Still going to include units. So 32 equals base times height. So 1 half times base times 16. Well, again, I can take half of 16 first before I start to try and figure out what B is. I think that'll make our life easier. 32 equals half of 16 is 8 times B. So again, the question I'm asking is, what times 8 is 32? B equals 4 feet. Again, we could have done 32 divided by 8 equals B. That's it for today's lesson. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or stop by my room and ask.